eight significant recessions over the last 60 years. And in each time, uh, in general, the private sector has sort of rebalanced itself and started off the floor and recovering. And this would have happened in this one too. But Dr. Ebling, if AIG was allowed to go down, um, if Bank of America was allowed to, to, to decline as it was declining, and all of those financial houses, Lehman Brothers, uh, Lehman Brothers just died, uh, Goldman Sachs and the rest of them, mm -hmm. if um, they were not propped up, you're suggesting that we would not have had a depression and uh, that uh, we, we would have been in a better situation? I'm saying is that we would have gone through rocky times, but I'm not persuaded that we would have gone through a recession. A you depression. See, or a depression. You, you just gave the example of Lehman Brothers, which was allowed to collapse. Uh, it was not saved by the U.S. government. But immediately what happened is a variety of other banks bought up all of its sound assets. Barclays Bank in Great Britain bought up a lot of its American assets and added it to his, their investment portfolio to manage successfully. Nomura Bank in Japan bought up a bunch of layman's assets in Asia. And Nomura and Barclays started competing to acquire positive and sustainable and profitable assets uh, that uh, layman had in Europe. If a variety of banks had, uh, had to shed bad assets or close down certain departments, all that would have happened is competitors would have seen some profit opportunities, picked up a lot of those positive assets that had a long run sustainability, and, uh, and the economy would have just worked itself out of this. I believe that what this is is a huge transfer of taxpayers' money and government borrowed money through the deficits to basically prop up special interest groups who didn't want to have to bear, bite the bullet from a lot of their own mistakes. But Dr. Evelyn, whatever recovery which has been experienced mm -hmm. has been called a period of jobless growth. Mm -hmm. And that tells me that many companies saw it as an opportunity to right-size their operations because of inefficiencies or, or, or whatever. The prime example being the auto industry, mm -hmm. its inability to compete with, with the Japanese mm -hmm, mm -hmm. auto industry. How do you square that with, with your thinking? Well, I think in the case of the, uh, if we use the example of the auto industry in the United States, the fact is the U.S. automobile uh, industry in America has been on the decline for, for decades. Even before the current crisis, let's say at the end of 2007, uh, the data showed that the U.S. automakers, General Motors, Chrysler, Ford, they together had less than 50% uh, of the domestic automobile market in, in, in America. This was already captured by Honda, by Toyota, BMW, Volkswagen, and so on. And Chrysler has had, this is the third bailout that it has received from the federal government through government uh, uh, subsidies in the 1970s, the 80s, and now, and now uh, the current one. The fact is, is that they have failed. And I say this in an American who drives in the United States. They have failed to make a quality car with, with good, safe, innovative features uh, that, that, that consumers are willing to, to pay for. And it's because the Hondas and the Toyotas and the other brands have made better, more attractive cars. Now the United States government is coming in and saying is that we want to now uh, rise up against and oppose the choices of the consuming public, which means you and me and anyone else who buys an automobile. We don't like your preferences and we don't like the fact that you're saying that these are bad competitors, loss-making competitors, people who shouldn't be running those businesses and making an inferior product. And instead they're taking taxpayers' money and propping up failed industries. And I say this as an American. If GM were to go under, if Chrysler were to go under, if Ford, which actually is profitable right now without government money, even if it were to go under, and every American car, uh, every car driven by an American was a Honda or a Toyota or a BMW or a Volkswagen, I don't care. Yeah, I but think you should buy the car that, that has the best features at the lowest price. Yeah, but if they had gone under, wouldn't, wouldn't that have been bad for many um, cities, uh, many states in the United States of America? Millions there would have Americans. been millions of people unemployed. And when you have millions of people unemployed, you, you, you would have long soup lines, eh? No. What would have happened is that, first of all, most foreign cars, that is, companies whose headquarters are in foreign nations, those cars are made in the United States. Honda has factories in the United States. Toyota has factories in the United States. 
These are valuable assets. Factories, conveyor belts, machinery, skilled workers. And what would have happened is that automobiles will be bought. Auto sales have been down in the U.S. But are people going to never buy cars again a year from now, two years from now, three years from now? Of course not. The economies will recover. So what would have happened is the, those foreign-owned automobile companies would have bought up a lot of these positive, uh, valuable, productive assets that General Motors and Chrysler would have been shedding as they perhaps went through a bank bankruptcy. And those skilled workers would have just been hired by the new employers, which would have been the Hondas, the Toyotas, the Volkswagens instead. So all that would have happened is that some people would have been downsized and would have had to change jobs. But this notion of a catastrophe that everyone who worked for these auto American automakers would have been on a bread line, is, it's just not, not true. They would have just been rehired by the people who bought the assets. Just as in any case, if one company buys another, they, they do let go some workers because of redundancies with their existing workforce and the bought workforce. But for the most part, those workforces are blended together. And that's what would have happened with most of those people in the U.S. auto industry. Dr. Richard Ebling, uh, a professor of economics, our guest on the program today. We take this break and we'll come right back. Back here on Jones and Company, speaking with Dr. Richard Ebling, who is a professor of economics today. And um, Dr. Ebling, based on uh, your description, what you've been saying before the break, uh, you you have a difficulty with governments um, propping up any economy. That's right. Uh, I think. Well, I think in this country, uh, yes. we have our government providing public sector jobs mm -hmm. to people to uh, clean the the. the mm -hmm. this, on the side of the streets, for mm -hmm. instance, um, they've given uh, incentives to uh, mm -hmm. uh, people to mm -hmm. pay their electricity bills and mm -hmm. uh, made uh, all sorts of arrangements with the average Bahamian so that uh, this uh, economic recession uh, would not be as hard on them as it would normally be if they wouldn't, if they did not do it. Uh, you have a problem with that? Yes. Because I think that, that the, the, the Bahamian dollars that have paid for this should have been left in your hands, Mr. Jones. You're a successful entrepreneur. You've been creative and innovative. You've started industries, a newspaper, a television uh, corporation. You provide jobs to dozens, maybe hundreds of people. You're obviously a creative entrepreneur. You know how to put money to work and productively create things of value and give jobs to people. That money should be left in the hands of private, successful, heroic entrepreneurs like yourself. And that would be the basis of growth, employment, and rising standards of living for your fellow countrymen. Not for politicians to take your hard-owned money and redistribute it in buying votes. And that's what it amounts to. When Talk a hotel, for instance, would uh, put out, say, 2,000 people, lay off 2,000 people, what should the government do? Just uh, let, them to, let them go and fonder? It's not a matter of, first of all, is that when the, when, the, when the hotel lets some individuals go, what would be the alternative for that hotel to maintain a workforce that it financially could not afford so everyone employed by the hotel gets fired and loses their job permanently because the hotel goes bankrupt? That would be even a worse tragedy for a much larger group of people. Now, what should be done is, as I suggested, immediately during this crisis, lower taxes, deregulate it, make it more easy and, uh, and efficient for businessmen to try to sustain their businesses, maintain their businesses, even for some people to afford to be self-employed if they lose a salary job. And those are the solutions. And as far as those who fall upon the cra between the cracks, I think that in a, in a healthy and, and, and just and moral society, the burden falls upon us, the free individuals, to follow our conscience by our reason, by our morality, by our faith perhaps, to be charitable and philanthropic to help our fellow men and not shift the, the, that responsibility onto bureaucrats who really don't give a damn except for votes and campaign contributions, whereas